Alhamdulillah. Uh, we're still with Hassan al-Muslim, the fortress of the Muslim, looking at the important du'as and dhikr that we should be making. And today we're looking at a dhikr in the dhikhul al-manzil, the dhikr that we say when we enter upon the house. Tayyib? The dhikr that we say when we enter into the house. Which is very important and it's one of the famous dhikrs, the famous remembrances. Uh, it goes as follows Allahumma inni as'aluka khayrul mawlaj wa khayrul makhraj bismillahi walajna wa bismillahi kharajna wa ala allahi rabbina tawakkalna so this is the dua a sharh the explanation awalan laftul hadith firstly we look at where did the hadith come from where did the hadith come from it was collected by the great imam of hadith imam abi dawood in his collection in his sunnah in his sunan and the sahabi abi malik al-ash'ari radiyallahu anhu is the one that narrated it from the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said idha walaja rajlu baytahu if a person enters into their house falyaqul then let them say allahumma inni as'aluka khayrul mawlaj oh allah i ask you for the best of entrances wa khayrul makhraj and the best of exits bismillahi walajna with Allah's name, we enter. Wa bismillahi kharajna. And with Allah's name, we leave. Wa ala Allahi rabbana tawakkalna. Wa ala Allahi rabbina tawakkalna. And upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our Lord, we have tawakkul. Thumma li yusallim ala ahli. And then the person should make salam upon the people that are in the house. And this was the narration from Abi Dawood. Now there's this, a discussion amongst some scholars, uh, you know the muhaddithin, the scholars of hadith, their job is to grade whether a hadith is weak, authentic, uh, fabricated and variations of grading in between those. So the scholars, they discuss amongst themselves whether this hadith is weak or authentic. Uh, many of them said it's weak and many of them said it's authentic. From those who said it's authentic or sahih, it's uh, permissible to narrate and act upon, is uh, Imam Ibn Muflih and Shaykh Abd Aziz Ibn Baz, may Allah have mercy upon them. So the hadith is okay for us to look at and for us to use, inshaAllah. The first statement, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said in this narration, إِذَا وَلَجَ الرَّجْلُ فِي بَيْتِهِ If a person, if a man enters into his house. So you find that many times in the narrations, Rajul, Rajul, always mentioning man, man, man. Does this mean that it doesn't apply to the women? Of course not. Between the, the women and the men are exactly the same when it comes to the rulings of uh, what they need to perform except in a few areas which is specifically mentioned just for women or just for men but in general the rule is that whatever is mentioned by the Prophet ﷺ is for men and women and the reason the Prophet ﷺ would mention men often is because he, the most of his time he would be mixing with men so most of the time the Prophet ﷺ would be addressing the men directly so that's why the Prophet ﷺ would often use the, the masculine term Rajul for men right so the Prophet said, إِذَا وَلَجَ الرَّجُلُ فِي بَيْتِهِ If a man enters into his house, if one of you enters into the house, then you should say this dua. So the Prophet is telling us that you say it either before you enter or as you are entering. The reason being because you want to seek refuge from the devils and evil before you enter into the house, right? You don't want the devils to enter in with you. So the whole point of saying this dua is that you say it before you enter into the house. Likewise, in other du'as, when we say the morning du'as for protection, the evening du'as for protection, then we say them before the morning time has come, or we say them before the evening time has come, because you want protection from the evil of the morning or the evil of the evening. So you don't say it once that time has arrived. So in summary, what I've said is that we should say this du'a as we are entering or before we entered. And the Prophet ﷺ said, if one of you enters into the house, the word house here is known as, it was mentioned as Qaydun Aglabiyun. It's the word used by the Prophet ﷺ because that is the most of the time where people will say this dua when they enter into their house. Okay, that's the place where it's mostly going to be used. However, that doesn't exclude it from being used in other places. You can use it when you go to work, when you enter into your workplace. You should when you enter into a hotel, a restaurant, when you enter even, into even a, a room, 
So wherever you're entering, one should use this type of du'a for protection. So it's not nece necessarily just for entering the house. Okay. The word continues, the du'a continues, Allahumma inni. This is the first words of the du'a. Allahumma inni as'aluka khayr al-mawlaj. Oh Allah, I ask you for the best of entrances, the best outcome when I enter. Wa khayr al-makhraj. And the best outcome when I leave. So what you're asking Allah is Jal, you want the best of outcomes when you enter into a place and you want the best of outcomes when you leave a place. You want to be protected and safe from the harms of any people, from the harms of any shayateen that may be there plotting against you and from any type of harm that may have been there for you, especially from the devils, the shayateen who are always plotting against the worshippers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In Sahih Muslim, we've, we have the hadith from Jabir radiallahu anhu who said, Samit when Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa yaqul, I heard the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say, إِذَا دَخَلَ الرَّجْلُ بَيْتَهُمْ فَذَكَرَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَىٰ إِنْدَ دَخُولِهِ وَإِنْدَ طَعَامِهِ That when a person enters into their house and they mention Allah's name upon entering and upon when they eat their food, قَالَ الشَّيْطَانْ لَا مَا بِيْتَ لَكُمْ Then one of the devils, they say to the other devils, there is no place for you to reside here tonight. وَلَا عَشَاء And there is no meal for you this night. So the first thing to note in this hadith that I just mentioned is that one devil speaks to the other devils. This shows us that it's not just one devil that tries to come upon us in our places of residence. It could be a whole pack of devils that try to come upon us. So when we seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are seeking refuge in Allah, not just from one evil, but from many evils. Okay. So And how awesome it is and how blessed it is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us these beautiful du'as one after the other so that we can have protection from the devils by remembering Allah, by imploring Allah, by seeking refuge in Allah and instead of having the devils with us, we can have the angels with us and that is something that one of sound mind and intellect would definitely want to pursue would definitely want for themselves in their life so we have to be extremely careful that our houses whether intentionally or unintentionally are not places that the devils would like to congregate and like to reside unintentionally because you forgot to say the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intentionally because you're a person who makes your house like a cinema for the devils you watch all kinds of movies in your house continually you, you eat all kinds of haram so it becomes a, a, a restaurant for the devils they come and they partake in your haram food and your haram drink so we don't want to be people who whether it's intentionally or unintentionally invite the devils into our houses so the part of the hadith that we're looking at again Allahumma inni as'aluka khayr al-mawlaj oh Allah I ask you for the best of entrances wa khayr al-makhraj and the best of exits so not only is it important to say this dua because we want protection from the devils but also how do we know that when upon entering a place or leaving a place it's going to be the last place that we enter in our life or the last place that we exit from in our life that could be the, our last action so seeking Allah's protection in that action and seeking his blessing in that action is something we'll make, which makes a lot of sense for us to do and is something which is very important for us to do so the hadith goes on to say the dua goes on to say bismillahi wa lajna wa bismillahi kharajna with Allah's name we enter and with Allah's name and blessings we exit so a question to yourselves, what do you notice about the Bismillah, the Basmallah here, as opposed to many other places that you say during the day or the night? For example, you say Bismillah before you eat. You say Bismillah before you make wudu, you say Bismillah before you go to sleep. So what do you notice the difference, there's a clear difference between saying it then and saying it in this instance? Has anybody noticed it? Would anybody like to answer? Taib, not to worry. Okay, so the clear difference is that when you say Bismillah in all those other situations, like when you go to eat, you're not mentioning what you're doing with the Bismillah. Okay? Whereas here, you're mentioning clearly what you're doing. You're saying Bismillah, I'm entering the place. And Bismillah, I'm leaving the place. Okay? In all the other places, in most of the other places, what you're doing is, in Arabic, it's known as the bism the bas, the action of the Bismillah is muqaddaran, muqaddurun, mahdhuf. The action, the object of the Bismillah is it's, uh, it's left out and it's estimated. So for example, when you eat, you say Bismillah, but you don't say Bismillah akul. You don't say Bismillah akul. You don't say Bismillah I'm eating. Rather, I'm eating is estimated. Okay? 
So you just say Bismillah. Whereas here in this part of the dua, Bismillah, you will let you know, you're actually mentioning what you're doing with the Bismillah. You're saying Bismillah, I enter, and Bismillah, I leave. So that is a clear difference. A question to ponder upon also, I won't ask you, but just for us to ponder upon. In this situation, what are we, in the situations where we don't mention the Bismillah, so we say Bismillah, I'm eating, or do we say I'm eating Bismillah? How do we translate it in our minds? Do we say Bismillah, I'm eating, or I'm eating Bismillah? Or well, many of the scholars, they said it's better to say Bismillah and then the action that you are doing, like in this hadith, Bismillahi, I enter, and Bismillahi, I exit. Why? Because you don't put anything before the great name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And other scholars, they said, no, it's allowed to do it the other way around. You can say, Aakulu uh, Bismillah, I'm eating with Allah's name. Okay? But we're saying, inshallah, the better opinion is that you say, uh, Bismillahi Aakul, with Allah's name, I eat. So you don't put anything before Allah's name, you put it after Allah's name. So in this narration and many other narrations, you'll find that what we're doing, a continual theme of what we've taken so far and what we continue to study throughout this course and many other courses, is that the servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is often being encouraged to seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or to seek aid from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to seek protection, to seek assistance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is something which is commonsensical because anybody who has love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would gravitate towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and would understand how beneficial it is to be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to seek Allah's blessings and Allah's support in everything that that person does in life. Not wanting to be left alone even for a moment. That's why there's a beautiful dua that we're going to take later on in the book if Allah gives us life and if we continue with this course where the Prophet وسلم, taught us to say Ya Hayyu Ya Qayyum Hayyu and Qayyum are these two powerful names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which in of themselves need a lecture to explain the beautiful meaning so anyway this dua Ya Hayyu Ya Qayyum Bi Rahmatika Astaghith Oh Ya Hayyu Ya Qayyum It is your mercy that I am beseeching Aslih li sha'ni kullahu Correct for me all of my situation, all of my affairs. And don't leave me to myself even for the blinking of an eye. So this is a beautiful dua and this is how the true believer feels with regards to his relationship with Allah. Azawajal. Never wants to be left for even for a moment. Why would you want to be left? If you had, for example, in this world, if you had access to the king of a particular land or even a minister below the king, why would you yourself want to go out and try to fulfill a need when you know all you have to do is give the king a call and he'll get everyone to do it for you? Or at least he will simplify the process for you, right? And to Allah belongs the greatest and highest and most perfect example. Allah is the most perfect king of all that exists. Why wouldn't we, we want to seek Allah's aid and Allah's blessings in everything we do? Like in the narration I just mentioned, we said, Oh Allah, don't leave me to my own self even for the blinking of an eye. Because the moment you're left to yourself is the moment you can go astray, the moment things can go wrong, the moment problems can occur. So this part of the had this part of the dua, which is a famous part, most people know Bismillahi Walajla, with Allah's name we enter, or Bismillahi Khrajla, and with Allah's name we exit. And then we say after that, Wa ala Rabbina tawakkalna. And upon our Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have tawakkul. What is this word tawakkal? We explained it maybe last week or the week before that. If somebody can answer, if they want to. What does tawakkul mean? The word tawakkul. To have trust in Allah, perfect. So it's, it means that in its simple form and it is correct as an answer. It means that your heart is attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the outcome of your affairs, knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring for you the outcome that you desire or a better outcome, whilst you take the means relying upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you do the means, of course you're still seeking aid from Allah azawajal, but with regards to the outcome of what's going to happen, your heart is fully connected in knowing that it's only going to come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, only by Allah's permission can what I want to happen transpire. So that is tawakkal, right? So after we've mentioned this narration, this du'a, okay, 
بسم الله ولجنا وبسم الله خرجنا وعلى ربنا توكلنا which is the famous part and the part before it is also uh, good to say then the Prophet وسلم, he said after you say this dua then you say salamu alaykum to the people of the house and this is further emphasized in other narrations for example in Abi Dawood from the etiquettes of Islam is that we give salam to one another wherever we are but especially to the people of the household so the hadith in Abi Dawood narrated by Anas radiallahu anhu قال, قال لي رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم he said this companion that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said to me يا بني أو oh my son إذا دخلت على أهلك فسلم if you enter or when you enter upon your family then give the salam loudly تكون بركة عليك وعلى أهل بيتك this will be a blessing for you and a blessing for the people of the household so we're coming from the worldly affairs we're coming to a house, we have a, a lot of baggage, a lot of stress, a lot of difficulty maybe that we've dealt with during the day. But as soon as we know that we're going to enter into the house, we have to change our mindset. Because now we're going to say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. We're making three du'as. May Allah have peace and security for you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmah. And may Allah have mercy upon you wa barakatuhu. And may Allah's blessings be upon you. So when we enter the house, we're not going to enter in a stressful manner. We're not going to enter in a manner where everybody in the house has a panic attack. Oh my God, so-and-so's come home. Put the toys away. Oh my God, so-and-so's come home. You know, let's all go to our rooms. No, it should never be like that. When you enter through the door, regardless of what you're suffering outside, you're now coming to your castle. You're now coming home to the people who are most important to you. So when you say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu, try to understand the meanings of this dua that you are making for your loved ones in the house. So you want to enter and you want to see the happiness on everyone's face. And you're begging Allah Azawajal in this dua of saying salam, that everyone is peaceful, everyone is safe, and everyone is blessed. Okay? And also likewise, the people of the house are going to reply to you. They're going to say, Wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuhu, right? So when they reply to you, they also have to understand that you've come from outside. Maybe you've had a difficult day. As soon as you enter, you don't want to enter upon chaos in the house. You don't want to enter and your wife or your children, they run up to you and straight away they tell you a difficult situation. Rather, they should wait for a while, okay? Because they should have the same emotions and the same, um, the same feelings same consideration that you have is that you want good for the family members they want good for you so they shouldn't put stress upon you as soon as you enter into the house if there's something stressful that needs to be discussed it can be discussed a bit later on once you've settled and had some rest so as a family unit we have to be concerned for each other's well-being and welfare we always have to race to try and please Allah through being concerned and being as servants to each other for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to try to please one another. The husband pleases the wife, the wife pleases the husband. The parents please the children, the children, children please the parents. It's a working relationship, but for the sake of Allah azawajal. And what makes it special being for the sake of Allah? Because there'll be times you don't want to. There'll be times you truly don't feel like, you know, being nice. But you force yourself to be nice because you know this is pleasing to Allah. This is what Allah wants. And also you're going to get a reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when you say Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah after saying the dua Bismillahi wa lajna wa bismillahi kharajna wa ala rabbina tawakkalna What happens if there's no one in the house? Do you still give the salam even though there's no one in the house or is that considered as being a bit mental, as being a bit strange? Anybody want to answer? So sister says, no, it's not strange. Exactly, no, it's not strange, according to many of the scholars. For example, Imam Nawi, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said in his book, Al-Adhkar, page 49, يستحب أن يقول بسم الله وأن يكثر من ذكر الله تعالى. It's, it's uh, recommended to say بسم الله and the other forms of remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وأن يسلم سواء كان في البيت آدمي أم لا. And then you give the salam upon entering the house whether there is a human being in the house or not. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah An-Nur, فَإِذَا دَخَلْتُمْ بُيُوتًا فَسَلِّمُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِكُمْ When you enter upon the houses, then give salam to yourselves. As to yourselves can mean to yourself as an individual or to yourselves as meaning the family members and people that, that are there. فَسَلِّمُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِكُمْ تَحِيَّةً مِنْ إِنْدِ اللَّهِ مُبَارَكَةً طَيِّبًا And give salam uh, the way that Allah has taught you. It will be full of blessings and full of barakah. Tayyib, 
one thing to mention before we finish um, some people they say okay Ustad oh, okay brother uh, you're teaching us these du'as but when we say such du'as and such dhikr we still find that we're not protected or we find that these du'as and these, uh, these protections are not working for us uh, why, why is that the case? Well, the first thing that we always have to consider when we find things not working out for us, right, in terms of dua and dhikr, the first thing we always have to consider is to look inwardly. Am I leaving off the major sins to the best of my ability and also the minor sins? In part of the hadith in Sahih Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ taught us something very pertinent and important. That the Prophet ﷺ mentioned a person that was on a point of journey. And when a person is upon a journey, that is one of the places where the dua is guaranteed to be answered. And the Prophet ﷺ mentioned the state of the person, that the person's hair was disheveled and the person's clothes were dusty from this long journey. So the dua is supposed to be answered for this person. And the person also raises his hands to the, to the heavens, right? And that's another way of having your duas answered. And he says, Ya Rab, Ya Rab. And also he's calling out, my Lord, my Lord, this is Tawheed. Another way to have your dua answered. So three ways or three reasons for the dua to be answered are being mentioned here. Then the Prophet ﷺ says, haram. But his food is from haram sources. Haram. And his drink is from haram sources. Haram. And his clothing is from haram sources. And he's been, you know, he's been nourished by haram. So how is it going to be the case that he's going to be answered then? So the Prophet ﷺ is teaching an important principle that if you're not leaving off sins, if you're not leaving off the major sins to the best of your ability and even the minor ones, then how's your dua? How do you expect Allah Azawajal to answer your dua? Your dua is not even going beyond your mouth depending upon how many sins you are doing. I'm not saying that Allah will never answer you when you're in a situation of committing sin. Yes, Allah can. And, and will maybe answer you but you're really putting yourself in jeopardy because with these sins you're covering you're putting barriers between you and your dua being raised to Allah or the mercy of Allah descending upon you May Allah protect us secondly the point to consider why duas are not being answered is sometimes your dua is being delayed because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to see how patient you are in this difficulty he wants to test your patience and he wants to reward you for your patience it could be a situation that Allah wants for you to have a high position in Jannah but you don't have enough good deeds to get to that position so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts, puts you through these tests and difficulties in order to reward you immensely through these tests and difficulties so that you can reach that high position in Jannah for which you didn't have enough good deeds without this test and also it could be something beautiful like Allah loves to hear you making dua to him so he delays the response so that you can keep making dua to him and increase in closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.